welcome for the uh, part two discussion on galvanic corrosion. The part one discussion on galvanic corrosion, we uh, raised certain issues of like, can we predict galvanic corrosion or not? If you have two metals, if you can predict, can we determine the galvanic corrosion rates? And um, if these two uh, questions are answered, then we said that you will need to know what are the factors that control the galvanic corrosion. And if you know what are the factors or parameters that control corrosion, the graphite corrosion, then it is easy for us to, to propose methods to avoid or to prevent the galvanic corrosion of the metals. We also need to look at the evaluation of the material for the application against the galvanic corrosion. We have seen the, uh, the first aspect clearly in the earlier class. Can we predict if two metals will undergo galvanic corrosion or not? What is the criteria for that? What is the criteria to show that, okay, I have given you a stainless steel and maybe a steel, between these two, uh, one will be galvanically corroded. What is the criteria for that? It is a potential. What is the potential called? It is a galvanic potentials or the corrosion potentials. So, we have seen in the last class that the galvanic potential is the primary reason for making one metal as an anode the other one as a cathode. We also just started discussing on how do you really predict the rate of corrosion. We look at the, the events diagram, right? We look at the events diagram, taking an example of a clearly a noble metal and an active metal. We took, for example, I think the platinum, I think, right? We took platinum. And then, and, and then use the Evans diagram to find out what happens if I, if you can couple them galvanically with the other active metal. You know, we gave only schematic thing there. We didn't give really actual values. I think we used for steel, I suppose, steel or iron is talking about. Now, we also said that in the case of platinum, the the, 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 the equilibrium that we deal with there is the, the uh, I would say, um, maybe H plus H, uh, H equilibria or maybe oxygen and hydroxide or water equilibria, for example. We are not really concerned about the platinum ion and platinum equilibria because it's too far from that. And then we also look at the equilibria of what? The equilibria of, of the active metal, in this case, maybe iron and iron ions and the corresponding taffel lines and, and see how the mixed potential theory will ultimately lead to the, the ECOR value of the platinum and the steel when they are coupled. What is the corresponding ECOR value? How does you get it? The same, the mixed potential theory is valid here. The total amount of cathodic reaction on the system is equal to the total amount of, um, what is that, other reaction? Anode reaction. So, that is the criteria. If that is the criteria, then you know what is the corresponding E car and I car values. We also said that if you are going to uh, shorten platinum versus steel, the E car value of the couple, I mean the E car value of, um, of the iron goes up and, uh, and so the anodic dissolution increases. We also say that the hydrogen evolution on steel or iron decreases 
whereas the hydrogen evolution pattern significantly increases. So, these are observations that we made. In practice, we do not normally see a noble metal being shorted with the active metals. We normally see metals which are generally active in nature, we are not talking about it. Okay? Say some examples practically you will see, uh, you know, you may have let us say steel, you may have stainless steel. or you may have cuproniccal alloy, you can have steel. Um, you know, we were talking about one of the prevalent place of galvanic corrosion is what? Is the heat exchangers. In the heat exchangers, you can have a steel uh, shell, the stainless steel tube, you may have cuproniccal um, to tube and steel as a shell can have. We can also have titanium and you can have steel, titanium, stainless steel. These kind of combinations are quite common. Okay? And uh, so, you are going to talk about really two active metals when they are involved. How does the corrosion take place? Now, I am going to now talk about here between two metals which is let us say uh, I, I will call I use iron here which is uh, somewhat like steel. I talk about a steel combined with, with the zinc. In practice, it is not the situation here. You have a, you have a galvanized coating, but I do not think zinc is used as a structural material. You know, there may be some zinc die castings, but otherwise structurally zinc is not used as a good material of construction. I taken zinc for, for one important reason to show that I car is not important in the galvanic corrosion. You have two metals like a steel and zinc. If I have assumed that the steel has got high corrosion rate and zinc has got low corrosion rate, that is not going to decide the galvanic interaction. What is going to decide is the galvanic potential that decides which is going to be made anode which is more going to make it as cathode. So, that is the reason why I chosen to illustrate how the galvanic interaction occurs between uh, say uh, iron or you can call it steel and the zinc. Now, how do you proceed with? You proceed in a very simple similar manner like you draw two Evans diagrams. right? The Evans diagram for what? Evans diagram for the steel the Evans diagram for, for zinc, which is first you need to make them, right. But when you are making this, be clear about what you, what you, in the Evans diagram, what are the things required you need, what are like exchange current density you required, tougher lines are required, tougher are required, the equilibrium potentials are required, okay. These are the things that are required actually. So, what you can do is you can construct the Evans diagram for zinc and iron separately or independently and find out between these two which will undergo more severe corrosion and when you short them, when the galvanic interaction occurs, right, what happens to these two metals, okay. And uh, so, I think you can you can work independently now, I think this is, you can start drawing the diagrams. But keep in mind the one important uh, factor, what is the difference between zinc and iron? We discuss I think which will undergo more corrosion, zinc will undergo more corrosion or, or iron will more undergo more corrosion, let us say in an assay solution. Yeah? Which of the two, or maybe in, in a let us say in a sodium chloride solution where the hydrogen reduction reaction is the cathodic reaction, okay? Other is the metal oxidation. You tell me which of the two metals you expect to corrode more? Iron? Why? Yeah, so the exchange condensity for hydrogen equilibrium 
with H plus on zinc is much lower as compared to the exchange gun density for H plus H on iron. It is about 10 power 3 times difference. Okay. So, so then you can now we can draw okay, a, a, a typical in or I would say a schematic um, device diagrams representing iron and steel and show how the corrosion taking place. So I think you should draw parallelly and and see how you are you are getting this this these things now. So I'm just going in a, in a very simple manner and there's nothing very complicated here, right? So I represent now the the tougher lines for hydrogen reduction reactions. Okay, I'll do that. So, which is what? Which one corresponds to uh, iron and which one corresponds to zinc? The right one corresponds to? The exchange condensity for Fe2 plus Fe and, uh, and zinc and zinc 2 plus are almost the same 10 power minus 6 or so. So, it is not going to change much actually. So, I have just drawn a you know a kind of representative diagrams ok. Which one will corresponds to zinc? Which is the one correspond to iron? The low one. So, this corresponds to zinc right I naught zinc 2 plus and zinc and what is this? This is corresponds to not right now you can find out what is the corresponding um, corrosion rates right and this is the um, Got zinc, all right? What corresponds to iron? The iron comes somewhere here. See, please again label that, huh? because you have to label these things, otherwise it will confusing. This corresponds to and this corresponds to electrons, right? And uh, these two are corresponding to what? This is corresponding to and 
I just put an arrow here, this corresponds to right. How do I proceed further? How do I know when you do a galvanically shorting them, what will be the resultant corrosion rate of iron and zinc? How do you proceed? I have add the oxidation of both the oxidation curves and I have add the, the reduction curves corresponding to both the metal surfaces, right. So, I, I do that, okay. So, what you can do is you can just add these two. Right. And uh, this corresponds to what? This corresponds to hydrogen evolution on both zinc and iron, correct? And similarly, I can do this response to total anodic. So, what is happening? Now, it is this intersection point of this, the mixed potential theory is now is valid, right. So, I draw a line connecting all of them. And I draw this line. What is this potential called? This is of E car of iron and zinc couple, right? This is the I car of iron zinc couple. Total corrosion rate is increasing actually, right. I hope these lines are clear to you now. So, can you tell me that means what happens? I, I take a zinc, I take zinc and I take iron here. I determine this corrosion potential of that, corrosion current of this. Now, I put them together, I just short them like this. When I short it, will the potential of iron and zinc will be similar or different? The similar because it is conducting, it is conducting, highly conducting. So, the potential of these two are going to be similar, right. That potential of this corresponds to what is given in the event diagram as E car, iron and zinc. This is what you are seeing this here. At that particular potential, what is the current that is flowing on steel and zinc is given by this diagram. Now, can you can you get from the diagram, the diagram, what is the one that corresponds to the dissolution of iron? What is the one that corresponds to dissolution of iron? And what is the one that corresponds to the dissolution of zinc? Can you people tell me in this? What is happening there? Yeah, so the line, the potential line intersects now, 
where does it intersect? It intersects all the lines. It intersects the cathodic reduction curve of iron, zinc, anodic current of iron and as well as zinc, right. So, that particular intersection point gives you what is the corresponding reduction reaction, oxidation reaction in both cases, okay. So, what is happening now? Now, what is happening now, you see, what is happening to the hydrogen evolution on zinc, on zinc? The hydrogen evolution on zinc is getting reduced to this value, am I right? It is reduced from here to this, this value is getting reduced, right. The hydrogen evolution is decreasing, decreasing from here to here, but what is happening to corrosion? The corrosion of zinc is moving from here to this value, am I right? So, zinc is now getting oxidized more. So, this is your, this is the I car of zinc when, when coupled with iron, right? No, I am sorry, nothing wrong actually. Yes, it is wrong actually, right? No. Yes, correct only. Yeah, I am sorry. It is correct. Yes, yeah, correct. So, it is that of the zinc here is correct, right. So, this is the zinc dissolution rate given here, and this is the dissolution rate of the this is the dissolution rate or I car of iron zinc actually, right. So, the iron corrosion rate is decreasing from, from this point to this point, am I right? And the zinc corrosion rate is increasing from here to this, ok. So, what do you call this process? you discuss about one protection before, the electrochemical protection of a metal, right. What do you call this? The sacrificial protection, it is it's a cathodic protection of the metal. By sacrificial action, zinc is getting dissolved at the expense of iron, right. The iron is getting protected here, ok. So, look at these, these diagrams, it is a very busy slide I would say, busy diagram actually, you have several information that you can draw from here. If in fact you understand this, you have understood the mixed potency theory in completion. I do not think you will have a problem because it is the most complex events diagram that you can think of actually, ok. Now, you know that the, 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 the dissolution of, of, of iron is, is, is getting reduced from here to this. Zinc is increased from here to this, ok, it is increasing here, ok. No, sorry, zinc is, it is moving from here to this actually, ok. So, so the, so this is what happens. Now, you, you, you look at the, the kinetic factors that influence the corrosion of zinc. What influences the corrosion of zinc in this? Can you just tell me? More. Each of them influence other one, right? Iron influences zinc, zinc influences iron, right? You have iron has got two table kinetics. One is the anodic kinetics corresponding to iron dissolution, please understand. You have a cathodic kinetics corresponding to H plus giving rise to hydrogen. Iron has got two kinetics. For the zinc to dissolve, which of the two kinetics influence very severely? Yeah? Hydrogen evolution iron is severely affecting, that means the beta C, the beta C of hydrogen evolution on iron is severely affecting this. Agreed? Then look at from the zinc point of view, 
which kinetics of zinc is affecting the galvanic corrosion of zinc. Zinc has two kinetics, copper kinetics. One is hydrogen evolution on zinc, right? Other is the zinc dissolution, zinc to zinc 2 plus, right? Two tablet slopes, beta C for zinc dissolution and beta A for the, I'm sorry, beta, uh, beta C for the uh, hydrogen evolution on zinc and beta A, which is the oxidation of zinc taking place. Beta A, okay. So, the beta A of zinc is getting influenced more. So, please notice the beta C of the noble metal, I can generalize it. When I say noble, I mean relative noble. So, so the beta C of the relative noble metal, beta C of the relatively noble metal and beta A of the relatively active metal decide the galvanic corrosion rate. Can you say that actually? The beta C of the the act of the of the relative noble metal beta A of the relatively active metal decides the galvanic corrosion rate. Right? Similarly, the I naught of the I naught for the cathodic reaction of the noble metal is more important than the I naught of the cathodic reaction of the relatively active metals. Similarly, you talk about I naught of the metal oxidation to metal reduction, you talk about it is more for the active metal than for the relatively noble metals. So, this, this, this diagram, this diagram that you see here, this diagram you see here, it talks about what are the governing factors for controlling the galvanic corrosion. Can we predict the corrosion rate? Can you do it? If I give you this, this, all the double parameters, exchange current density, is it possible for you to calculate by solving the equation, what will be the corrosion rate of, of, of iron before coupling with zinc and after coupling with zinc? Is it possible to do that by solving the equations or not possible to do that? I want an answer from you. Possible? So, it is possible. So, it is possible to calculate the corrosion rates based on the mixed potential theory, based on the Evans diagram, okay, what will be the corrosion rate of the galvanic couple okay, in two different metals are existing at all. All we need are the independent governing equations. Yeah. yeah. That is right. You can add one more complication. What happens? Suppose I have oxygen in the system. It is a unique question. Eh? When, when metal is corroding in, in water, you still have. So, you need to add one more complexity to that, right? Add one more to this. You can solve the equation, right? You can write an algorithm and solve it. It is not that difficult for you to do this. In fact, people do it. It is not that in academic exercise, people do in the field how the corrosion are taking place in the galvanic conditions, right? So, it is possible people do it because there are practical problems existing in the field. Okay? So, they use these governing equations to solve the galvanic interaction between the two different metals are done actually. Okay? To say then what kind of a life is possible, all this you can do this with this equation. I hope you are able to get this clarity in this event diagram. If not, you please have a look at this, go through more closely. If you have any problem, you please do let me know. Okay? If you understood this events diagram, I think you have understood almost all the complex events diagrams that are possible in the corrosion processes of metals, whether galvanically taking place, taking place by crevice process, pitting process, or all are following the events diagram, the kinetics of that actually. Okay? If you are, if you are, if you are clear and we, if you have any questions, we can move forward. Okay? Anybody has any questions, you please let me know. Yeah. How do we get the line corresponding to the total anodic reaction in the given graph? Huh? The total anodic. What do you do? See, the current varies with respect to the potential, right? So, what I do? 
let us take the case here, let us take this one, this corresponds to what? This corresponds to ion dissolution. This is the equilibrium potential. When I move the potential to higher value, suppose I move the potential, I move it to here, for example, I move it to this place. Okay? This corresponds to this. How do I get this? The travel line, right? Eta is equal to plus beta log i by i naught. Right? I can calculate. I know the equilibrium potential. I know applied potentials. I can calculate, right? So I get this line. I get this line. Now, at this given potentials, suppose let us take this particular potentials. I know this is the amount of current for ion dissolution. This is the current for zinc dissolution. That is the total current I am going to get. Suppose I take ion and take uh, zinc together and pass current, I apply same potential. If I use an ammeter, that is the total current, I will get it. So I simply added these two, okay, and in a graphical way, but you can also do it by solving the equations by applying various potentials, right? You know the equilibrium potential, you can keep on at different potentials, you can able to do that, okay? So graphically, you can do this. You can also do by having writing a proper algorithm. And, and getting these values without any problems. Okay? So, that is what I have done it. Okay? See, I have not added here. Please see here. Below this is only one current and above this only the current goes up. Right? So, I have just done a simply a simple common, uh, I would say, uh, sort of understanding that how this will work at all actually. Yeah? See, please here, this is a log scale. Huh? The log scale is, is, you know, may marginal means it is a log value, right? Assume that it is 10 power minus 4 and it is 10 power minus 3, you add it, what happens? So, it will be, you know, 10 power minus 4, 10 power minus 3 is going to be 1000, 1001, for example, okay? So, so, so in graphically speaking, it is a log scale. If it is a linear scale, it would have just pushed equally, right? So, it is a log scale here. That is why you are getting this small variation. Otherwise, it is a significant variation that you are seeing that. Okay? Of course, compared to this, this is a small variation, no doubt, because it is a log scale at all. Okay? So, please notice that this is a log scale. That is why we, we have added here okay, only small. In fact, if you look at more closely, you may not even go to this value. It must be just touching the line only because you know it is 10 power, it is 10 power 3 times higher. So, it is going to go into the, the third decimal point. So, it is going to be less only actually. Okay? So, so, basically, uh, you know, it is a log scale, that is what it is. Yeah? Let us shall you move. Okay? So, this is how uh, you understand and you can predict the, uh, 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 calculate the, the corrosion rate of, 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 the, of the metals. Let us make it a little bit more complex. Assume that the system is passivating. You know the passive systems are, you know. Can you give an example of a passive passive system? Stainless seals in maybe in sulfuric acid. Okay, and titanium can I be this? Okay. Let's take the the case of a stainless steel in an acid solution. It is deaerated, it is not aerated. So what happens in that case? It undergoes what? It undergoes active passive transitions. We have seen somewhere before, but is different way of interpreting today. Okay? So stainless steel in deaerated acids. I am not talking about pitching at all, just I'll talk of passivation. Okay? Let us take this what I am going to do. Okay? So, this is uh, corroding here, the metal is uh, undergoing This is, let us say, um, uh, I naught H plus 
H on stainless steel. Okay, this is an active passive dissolution, and you guys know that it is it is an I car. This is your car. To make it pictorially, I say take a material, an acid. Let's say sulfuric acid, dilute sulfuric acid, or stainless steel, so this is the E car if I measure with a reference electrode and um, I get this E car and if you carry out polarization diagram all you get something like this actually. What I will do, I am going to now insert a platinum and I am going to short this. Okay. So, what do you think will happen now? In order to know what to, to happen, what you should do now? I should draw platinum. So, I should do one for platinum. What I have done for this, I do one for platinum. Okay. I do something I not okay on platinum. So, what do you do? You just sum up these two. So, what do you think happens now? Corrosion decreases, right? The corrosion rate significantly decreases because of the galvanic action right so you can see that that the corrosion rate moves from there to this this is due to what it is due to i car of stainless steel platinum understood for some reason Assume that the line is going to line somewhere here. Assume that the line is going to be somewhere here. What happens? What will happen? Increases. So, it depends upon what extent the exchange current density is increasing. If the exchange current density is not increasing adequately, you could have a situation where the corrosion rate would increase. Right? Let us go to the situation here. Now, is moved from here to this. Does it does it reflect something we discussed earlier? Hmm? The cathodic protection? Is the potential is moving cathodic? Huh? It is moving anodic, right? The potential is moving anodic. So, it is similar to an anodic protection. In anodic protection, you are applying an external current by a by a by a potential stat. Here, you just use a platinum. The platinum can enable okay, the, the passivation of the metals. Possible. I am not saying doing, but it is possible that you can do. If this current is adequate enough to cross the nose of the diagram, nose of this particular particular polarization curve. That that's of course is critical, right? So it is possible to do this. Okay? And this is happening uh, in order here, this happens in the case of titanium and platinum. It happens in the case of titanium and platinum. We can take a titanium. The reason is that the E p is quite low for that, it is very low. The critical condensity for titanium to passivation becomes very small. So, you do not need so much of so much of current required. Okay? So the platinum it does help. So titanium platinum is a well known example of industrial use. Industry is used. Really. How is it used in industrially? I will just give a slightly different. Okay. The people do this is called as titanium platinum alloys. Okay, here 
small quantities of of small quantities platinum is alloyed you make an alloy as the metallurgists know right you take titanium put platinum to that you melt it and this undergoes passivation how does it go i have let's say okay and i i this is your, your titanium alloy and i have very small amount of of platinum that i have how does it work initially in this case okay as i told you before i have this initially what happens you get something like that now as the titanium dissolves what happens platinum gets enriched right okay now what i've answered as the titanium getting enriched what will happen to this this line this line will start am i right so this will move as titanium gets corroded and platinum gets enriched so what will happen in this case at beyond certain point the platinum will spontane beyond certain point the titanium will spontaneously passivate i don't need to pass any external current okay because of this so you don't put too much of platinum in the, in the beginning you put small platinum okay as the titanium dissolves enrichment of uh, platinum occurs and and so the 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 cathodic curves start shifting towards right side and ultimately lead to passivation is by of corrosion right isn't it over the mechanical action the titanium and platinum will go together right it won't remain platinum also will just get knocked off because platinum is noble it doesn't dissolve it remains on the surface and so it gets enriched okay so and this is called as this is called this term for this is called as noble metal alloy mostly sulfuric acid no huh? yeah, reduction reaction is hydrogen only in sulfuric acid right what is the reduction reaction is a hydrogen reduction reaction actually right Yeah, yeah, of course you can you can put a platinum and draw it. I I just simplified all this actually. Okay, <laughs> put that. So this you can say if you want is called as a noble metal alloying, and uh, so this the principle is like this only. So what do you need to look at here is analyze the situation. You know, okay, how does the galvanic interaction works? Okay, it could work. if it is going to be purely noble metal and active metal two different active metals or you can have a noble metal and a passive metal the passive metal and the active metal you know you can have all kind of combination you don't have to worry you just have to draw the evans diagram and then find out what is the resultant galvanic corrosion can happen in the metal actually okay so that's the way you should proceed in calculating computing the corrosion rate of the galvanic couples okay is it is it is it clear to you okay so so far um, we have seen the influence of uh, 
electrochemical factors on the galvanic corrosion of two dissimilar metals. If I can summarize um, what are the factors that one should look into uh, when you are computing the, the galvanic corrosion, I think that will be very useful. Um, the following factors, electrochemical factors. We have seen uh, three different cases, active metal and a noble metal, two active metals. In another case, uh, a passive system and a noble metal combinations. If I summarize, uh, okay, what are the governing kinetics in each case? We can say that the cathodic kinetics of of what metal you think, which of the two, the noble or active metal will, will, will influence the galvanic corrosion. The cathodic kinetics of which one? Noble. The noble metal, okay, of noble metal. Two, the anodic kinetics. which of the two, okay. I would put it as active or I call as relatively active. That way uh, you can even call this is noble or what you call it or relatively noble right. Noble or it could be relatively noble. Hmm? When you say this kinetics, what do you mean by that? What are the parameters you think? Can it, the broad right kinetics means what are the parameters you think? What are the things that will take into account? The kinetic parameters are what? One the exchange current density, right. Two, what is that? It is the equilibrium potentials or you may even call it as a corrosion potentials. What else? Third, travel slopes, right? So, so you you if you can look for these informations uh, with respect to the relatively active metal and relatively noble metal, and you get these parameters, you can you can calculate what can be the galvanic corrosion rate of the relatively active metal right. So, that can be can be done without much of a difficulty. Any any questions here? Okay.